you exist between two realities. There's this internal reality, the inner world, and there's an external one, the world out there. Yeah, we might say there's interception and exterception, that you're fully inside or fully outside, but no, these are two layers of your everyday experience and perception. You can never really get fully away from one side or the other. We are always dancing in a sort of sweet or not so sweet mix between these two layers of reality. Let's talk about these two sides as well as how to dim down or brighten up each of these two layers, the internal one and the external one, so that we can create a more balanced, smooth, happy mix between the inside and the outside. Living in our body and mind and simultaneously in the world at the same time, finding that home sweet perceptual home. Doing these solo episodes, man, they are a scary, exciting, wonderful journey. I... (laughs) I love I love going through them. I love doing it. But man, it is freaking scary because you don't know where it's going to go. It's it's wild. Um you go in with a plan. You got your notes, you got your outline. You're all ready to go. But then <sighs> there's only a tiny sliver what ends up happening. The the plan doesn't go as planned. Uh, new things emerge, monsters pop out, animals start climbing on your back, the weather suddenly changes, um, new opportunities are perceived, and you're like, oh my god, this is not what I thought it was, where is it going, I don't know, what about the plan? And now at this point, you're already uh, freaking five miles into the forest, and you can't really go back, you gotta just keep plowing forward. I guess you could push the eject button, You could just turn off the video game, take off the VR headset, and start over. But uh, you feel, no, let's let's keep going, let's keep going. And that's why I tend to, uh, one reason why I tend to even avoid doing these solo episodes in the first place is because it's such a scary, dark journey. It's the most exciting thing in the world, but man. And so what I end up doing usually, if I do do an episode by myself, is... Um, well, at least, at least in the past, is I would I would write it out. I would literally script out the entire thing because then the journey's all planned. There's no journey anymore. It's all I guess you're doing it before the actual recording. You're you're writing it out, but then you have the chance to edit it and control it. And I don't know. It's not quite as exciting. It's not the adventure has sort of already been decided. The story's already been told, and it's a bit controlled by by my rational mind. And there's something about speaking. And I think you you notice the same thing too for yourself when you're just talking. And we especially notice this when we get into real flow and talking to uh, someone we know and love and trust. And, you know, you talk for hours and hours and things are coming out that just could not come out um, through pen and paper. And anyway, this is this is not the episode. This is just sort of a, a warm up. Um, just me saying that today I I went back and forth between the two modes. First, I started just chopping through that jungle and, and speaking, and it got scary, so I, I did eject. I did I did not ejaculate. I ejected. Come on, guys. And I went to my comfort zone, and I, I started writing it out, started scripting it out. But I don't know. The spirit wasn't there. It felt a bit dead. So I crumpled that up, and jumped back into the jungle, which is where I am now, and which is why I'm talking the way I'm talking. <laughs> You're like, what is a topic? This is not a topic. Yeah, that's how jungles go. You have to just sort of fl- go with the flow of it and, and, and see where it takes you, which is the whole beauty of it. There'll be weeds. There'll be um, little pieces of crap stuck in your hair and on your shoe and stuff. Um, but then also you'll you'll find new paths. You'll find little flowers and um, discover new species and make new friends and find new ideas along the way. So this is where we are. Okay, back to the topic that was planned for today and we will see if it actually emerges is 
I want to talk about these two worlds that we um, always exist between. We are literally, as human beings, trapped in a kind of mixed reality. We think that the world out there, the world outside of ourselves, uh, uh, the, pl- the place full of o- objects and other people and, and things and places, that is that is the world. Yes, that is one of the worlds. And that external world, this world out there, is one of the worlds that we are usually in to some degree. But there's another world that's equally real and usually present, at least in our waking life. I mean, maybe it's always present. Both of these worlds always exist. Listen to me now. I'm already tripping up through the weeds and getting attacked by little tigers of my own imagination. Yeah. So we're in these two worlds, the internal world and the external world. The external world, yeah, you know what that is. Then the internal one, you also know what that one is. It's that, that place full of feelings and thoughts and emotions and imaginations and uh, sensations, pain, pleasure, desire, hunger, fullness, craving all that stuff inside of yourself, behind uh, your skin and bones, the inside. Some people differentiate these two modes of perception as interception, the perception, the focus on the internal state, the world in here, that's interception. And then we got exteroception, where our perception is focused on the external world, the world out there. But the thing with this uh, dichotomy, this uh, differentiation between interception and exteroception, is these are these are the two worlds. These are extremes, and we never are fully one hundred percent in exteroceptive mode, fully only looking at the world out there, or one hundred percent fully in interoceptive mode, focusing on the world in here. It's like there are these two layers, these two films or filters or something, and they're stacked on top of one another, mixed together, the outside and the inside, the inside and the outside. It's always a weird, special blend between the two. Yeah, sometimes we tend to be more uh, externally focused, more uh, focused on the outside world. I guess the extreme of this might be a kind of a dissociation, a dissociative state where we're um, completely unaware unfocused on what's happening inside of our own body. We can't feel our heartbeat. We don't notice our breath. We don't even notice what we're feeling or thinking. And we're just kind of zombie mode and we're walking through the world and we are focusing on all those external objects and things. Or we can be on the opposite extreme where we are completely in our own imagination, an internal sensation. The outside world is cut off. We don't even know. We can't even see what's around us. Our eyes might be closed. We can feel our breath. We can feel our heartbeat. We are watching our thoughts pass by us, hyper aware of our sensations and emotions and everything inside of ourselves. And yeah, maybe you feel your feet on the ground or the wind on your nose, but you don't really notice it. And this kind of gets back to the point of you're never 100% on the inside or 100% on the outside. You're always kind of dancing between these two worlds. And now you can kind of see probably why I was uh, trying to script this thing out because it's really hard to articulate this this special perception that humans, and I think other animals probably have too, where we are literally between two worlds. As Heidegger says, we are being in the world. As Kant says, our perception of the external world is always filtered via with our thoughts and concepts and imaginations. But beyond that, our internal sensations and and everything happening on the inside. What a jumble I'm making with this. What a jungle this is. How hard is it to express this? Um, I'm doing my best. Anyway, we got the inside, we got the outside. You feel it, you know it. Um, Sometimes you're too far on one extreme, you're too uh, outward focused, and sometimes you're on the other extreme, you're too inward focused. Um, Some kind of good points about being being on the inside, kind of dimming down the outside and sort of brightening up the inside world is, yeah, you maybe you got some new ideas, you got uh, some creativity, some kind of uh, imagination. Uh, you're aware of, of your internal state, your health perhaps. Um, if, if you got some problem going on with your heart or you got a pain in your toe or whatever, um, you're going to feel that. You notice your breath. 
you notice how you feel. You likely have a greater knowledge of, understanding, and awareness of your own self more, your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual self. You know yourself, but there's some darkness in there too that maybe you want to get away from, but there is this self-knowledge and awareness. That is not a bad thing, but maybe it's too much awareness. You're hyper aware of yourself. The bad side of that is, yeah, that could be, that can lead to to some worries. Oh my God, am I going to die? Um, anxieties. There's too much emotion. There's too much thought. There's too much sensation. Yeah, the outside world's all kind of blacked off. You don't need to worry about external threats, but there's all this internal stuff that is scary and, 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 and worrisome. So yeah, there are beautiful things, things that you can write about, things that you can create. It's always good to understand yourself and to be aware of your physical and mental state. But there's also a dark side to that. Anxiety, depression, fear, etc. And then, you know, when, when you get sort of out there, when you dim down the light inside, this internal light, and that's kind of, eh, it's there, but it's mm, kind of fading off into the background. And then, boom, you brighten up the external world, that world out there that we call reality, but which is really only 50% of reality. There's good things to that. You're moving around. You're getting things done. You're finding things. You're experiencing things. Probably a little bit less worry and fear. And if you, there is fear or anxiety or worry, it's something about something that's in your physical, literal environment right there in front of you. A real thing to worry about. A tiger, uh, a man chasing you. There was an earthquake here recently in Japan. Um, the f- ground rumbling under your feet. There's a real threat. But most likely, if you're out there in the external world, if you're really, really focused on there, on that side of things, then, yeah, there probably will be less anxiety and worry and depression and all that. You're, you're kind of in action mode. But the bad side of that is if you get trapped too much out there, if this internal light is always sort of dimmed down, basically kind of off, you're dissociated from your yourself, um, you might be living a more inauthentic life. You might be just going along with um, the way the world is going, not even listening to, not even able to listen to your internal state. Yes, your sensations and physical internal state, but also that mental, that spirit inside of you, telling you where to go, telling you where not to go, redirecting your external actions. So there's always this sort of push and pull and and dance between these two modes of perception that are layered on top of one another. And I can go on and on and on about this, trying to define it and describe it, but all you got to do is just sit there for a minute and, 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 and feel this kind of inward force this force going inward, and there's also this sort of force going outward. You're kind of literally being pushed and pulled through reality, pulled into yourself, getting smaller, and and kind of something pushing you out there, opening you up uh, toward the big wide world outside there. All right, so that's my little definition spiel. What's the point of all this? Well, yeah, one, just to remember that we are in these two worlds that there is always a mixture of interoception and exteroception. A perception of the inside and a perception of the outside. And the two are not really separated. We are being in the world. The world and ourself, our body and mind, are kind of one thing. Or at least that's the way it's perceived. If you are on the extremes, when you're really internally focused, yeah, you might feel like I am separate from the world. Or when you are really externally focused, out there on that extreme, you might feel like the world is the only thing that there is. There is no me. If there is a me, it's not connected to this world. It's it's dissociated from it. Okay, so where do we go from here? You got to ask yourself, Where are you right now? 
what is your physical state? What is your mode of perception right now? If there are these two ingredients, inside and outside, what's the ratio? What's the percentage mixture of both of them? And then we want to, sometimes we want to go to one extreme. That's what we want. But in general, it seems that to have that sort of flow experience, that happy, perfect, blissful state, you want to be right there, that sweet spot between the inside and the outside. You're literally got one foot on each. You're, oh, you're, you are in the world, but you're also in yourself. It's just completeness. Think about like when you're in the bathtub or something, or even you're in your room, and you're switching between hot and cold. You're trying to get the temperature just right. So you turn on the hot water, and that feels good. Ooh, now we're getting some hot. Ooh, we're going out there in the world. But then it gets a little bit too hot. So what do you do? You turn on some the cold water, put some cold water in there. And then, ah, it's perfect. But then, now it's a little too cold. So you turn on the hot. And you're always kind of, if you want the perfect temperature, water temperature in the bathtub, you almost got to have both dials going. You're kind of turning the hot on, turn the cold on, the hot and the cold and the hot and cold. And you're switching back and forth. And you can never keep the temperature perfect for too long. And the same thing happens in your room. And I guess that's why we have these um, things like thermostats to help create that homeostasis. So that's what this sort of is, actually. It's a, it's a homeostasis of perception. We talk about having sort of this sweet mix between dopamine and serotonin or a mixture of focus and calm or a mixture of acid and alkaline. And this is just another, another version of that. It's a perceptual homeostasis. And I think naturally we want to get that temperature, that perceptual temperature just right. Interoception, exteroception are kind of just bleeding together, blending together in this sweet, sweet mix where, oh my God, that world out there, I'm in it. I love it. It's great. And this world in here, I'm in it. I love it. It's great. And although it's fun to take a little vacation to the inside or to the outside, if that's your home, if your home is super, super hot and always hot or super, super cold, always cold, I don't know. You kind of start start craving the other side. But when you're your base camp, your your main spot, your default is, I am being in the world. Wow, how beautiful that is. So, yeah, ask yourself the question right now, where am I? Am I too internally focused or too externally focused? And then there are some things we can do to shift to the other side. Think of it like you're in that hot bath and you just need to turn on a little bit of that cold water. Or it's too cold outside, so you got to put on some gloves. These are tools to get us toward, closer toward that, that middle. Or maybe you don't want to go to the middle. Maybe you want to go far off to the extreme. Then crank it up. Keep going. Keep going in that direction. But where are you now? Go the opposite way. Unless you're happy there. If you want to stay there, stay there. Whatever, that's fine. You want to stay inside your internal world. you got things to do there. Do it. Do them. But if you don't feel okay, if you feel, hmm, I don't know, something's off, what you probably need to do is get out. And likewise, if you're, you are out and you're, yeah, 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 running around and externally focused, but you don't feel right, uh, I have all these friends and I'm doing all these things and uh, this is a lot of fun, but I don't know, I don't, I don't feel happy. Maybe you got to turn on some of that cold water, go the other direction. Balance things out by going inward. So now let's talk about some of these tools for pushing us more outward into the external world, increasing exteroception, and likewise other tools for bringing us inward, uh, increasing our interoception. So we can get these two worlds dancing together in just a sweet, in just the right mix of, you know, sweet and sour, dark and light, hot and cold. Ooh. The inside and the outside. Me and the world. First, there are some visual tricks we can 
use. When you open up your vision, when you look wider and further and higher, just generally when there's more outward visual world being perceived, the more you're going to extercept and perceive the external world. It's just super obvious, but this is literally what happens. So if you're too inward focused, what you can do is just open up your vision. Look out the window. Look far along the horizon. Try to look as far as you can. Also, look as wide as you can. You know, maybe literally just turning your head side to side, left and right, left and right, or even just moving your eyes left and right, left and right. You're seeing more of that world. And that's going to bring you out of yourself, out of your head, out of your body a bit. Look up. How high is the ceiling? If it's like right there on your head, you're touching the ceiling with your head. I don't know what kind of room that is. Freaking hobbit. Freaking house mouse. And then try to lift that ceiling up. I mean, you can't. So you're basically going to have to change rooms or get outside. Get outside. How high is that ceiling? Woo. It's, it's infinitely high. That's going to bring you more into the external world. And like literally here, you are going out into the world. You're leaving your little house. Your walls are getting wider. The wall in front of you is further away. If you're out in nature, that wall is really far away. It's it's a mountain or something. It's a tree off there in the distance. If you're walking through the city, it's some, some random building in front of you blocking your vision. And then the walls off to your side, those open up. They disappear. If you're swimming through the ocean or you're skydiving, falling through the sky, there are no walls. Even if you close your eyes, you can kind of get rid of these things. You can open up your vision and depending on how you do it, you can either, eyes closed, enter further into your, dive deeper into your internal world or you can go outward. It depends on what you're focusing if you're focusing on your breath, you're focusing on your heartbeat, you're focusing on a little teeny, teeny part of your body, then yeah, that's going to increase the interoception and bring you further inward. This is what a lot of people do with meditation. But there are other kinds of eyes closed exercises, meditations, if you want to call them that, that will take you outward, that will open up your, your vision and increase your exteroception. Move your eyes side to side with your eyes closed. Or imagine yourself. Look at yourself in the third person. Zoom out. Exit your body. Look at yourself from up above or off to the side. You could even zoom out further. Look at your tiny little self, that speck inside the giant globe, the earth, or the universe. Notice how small you are. Look at yourself from far, far, far away. You can even imagine a world in which you no longer exist. A world in which you are dead. Meditate on death. Imagine the world without you in it. You, this body, this mind, it's gone. There's nothing but world. This is going to take you outside of yourself and into the world. Yeah, only through your imagination, but that still works. And then open your eyes. With eyes open, like I said, just move the walls, all three, all four of them, if you can, as far, far away as you can, and look out. Open up your vision, and that will help bring you out into the world. And there are these secret hidden walls that we don't really notice sometimes. It could be the clothes where we are wearing. Just by wearing tight clothing, that kind of creates this illusion of being trapped in. It pushes us inward. But if we're naked or our clothes are really loose, we kind of open up and, and enter that external world a bit more. We exteroscept and, and that balances things out. So you can use, use clothing um, also as a way to, to go the opposite direction, to turn on the hot or the cold or whatever you don't have enough of right now. So either loosen up your clothing or tighten it up. Loosening up the clothing or taking it all off, that'll take you more outward, out into the world. Um, tightening your clothing up, feeling that tight clothing on your body, getting all bundled up, that, that'll, that'll bring you more inward. 
Hats are another way, um, another thing we can use. If you have a cap on your head, that literally brings the ceiling down to right in front of your eyes. You are a hobbit now. You are the little, little house mouse. So if you want to focus, if you want to go inward, if you want to intercept more, then put on a cap. But take it off if you need to go the other way. Or perhaps you're wearing a hoodie or some horse blinders or something, bringing the sidewalls right up next to your face, closing your side world in. Maybe you're wearing a cap too, and you're right up against a wall, staring at this tiny computer in front of you. (laughs) You're going to be intercepted. (laughs) You're going to feel small inside your internal world. Yeah, yeah, you might be experiencing the external one, but... I'm guessing there's going to be a bit of a boom, 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 a bit of a heartbeat, feeling the pressure in your eyes, feeling anxiety in your mind. You're going to be in there. So you might want to step away, take off that cap, take off that hoodie, walk outside, open up that big visual space in front of you, walk through it, see it, hear it, smell it, open it up. So be aware of what, what are you wearing how is it affecting your perception? Is it, is it pulling you more inward or is it pushing you outward? Like I said, just do the opposite of where you are right now. And that'll help balance things out. And that'll overall make you feel uh, more in flow, uh, more creative, uh, happier. All of these things. And you just got to keep moving the dial a little this way, a little that way until you, ah, that's just right. But just standing still and just doing what you're doing, that's not going to get you anywhere. That's like sitting in a cold bath and expecting to feel happy. If if that's what you want, if you want a cold bath, then that's good. But if you're like, ah, I I want it to be, I want it to be this, I want it to be like this. But you're not moving the dial in the opposite direction, then then, then nothing's going to change. Just keep kind of moving it this way, moving that way, moving this way, moving that way. And it's never, it's a never ending story. It's a never ending project that's why happiness is so hard is yeah this is only one side of happiness this is a a sort of um perceptual balance homeostasis but if you can get this side right a lot of other things kind of start falling into place you can use your breath as well in general exhaling more is going to open you up it will take you outside of your head and outside um of this internal space and help you perceive more of the external world and, and to bring you, to push you out into the world out there. So exhale, breathe out. And if you want to increase your internal state, you want to go inward more, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. But well, one tool alone never really does a trick. It's all of them stacked on top of each other. How are you breathing? How, what are you wearing? How, what are you looking at? What's your visual world look like? There's all these different things happening at the same time, simultaneously. And one is not usually enough. Plus, if you didn't get enough sleep, and if you chronically aren't getting enough sleep, you're very likely like stuck on one side of the seesaw. You are trapped inside yourself, or you are trapped out there, and it's really hard to dial things in the other direction. Some people might be stuck out there, stuck in the external world, being pulled along by things, and other people are just trapped inside themselves and they can't get out. So sleep, if you sleep, all this stuff might just happen on its own. You don't need to deliberately change your visual field or your breathing patterns or food or diet or any of that because it, it, it might just sort itself out. But yeah, diet, food, that's another thing we can do to change this world, right? I can't really tell you which foods are going to do what, so just take note of what foods tend to make you go inward and which ones kind of push you out out there. Some foods literally make you want to just stay home, lay in bed, do nothing. And other things, other foods, supplements also, will, will push you outwards. Will make you start thinking about, hmm, what's out there? It, it'll get your legs and body moving, and you'll go outside. 
and you'll search for things and you'll look around at the world outside of yourself. You'll get into action mode. So I don't know what foods those are for you. It seems to be a very individual thing. So just, yeah, notice, take note of what foods bring you inward, that get you all uh, inside yourself, maybe increasing anxiety or, or stress or bringing some kind of self-understanding or they, they get you out in, into action mode and they, and they push you out into that world and let you perceive more of that uh, external world. In general, for me, when I eat, I get outside of my myself. When I fast, when I don't eat anything, I tend to get into more interoceptive mode. But then again, if you eat too much, you're extra full, you overate, then yeah, you kind of go back inward again. So it's like how much you eat, what you eat, it just, just check that out for yourself because I really don't know your body. And think of food as a tool for either dimming down or brightening up as a kind of dimmer, brightener switch for both the external world and the internal one. Tools for interoception and for exteroception. And back to vision, I kind of touched on this already, but when your eyes are open, in general, you are going to be more externally focused, but not necessarily because you still do have this body that you cannot turn off. But you can more easily get distracted by all the stuff out there. But when your eyes are closed, it's kind of hard to ignore everything going on in here. I mean, what else are you going to do? And the same is generally true for our other senses, hearing, smell, taste, etc. They turn on extra reception. But of course, they also alter your interoception. When you see the peach, you also kind of feel something on the inside. And when you taste the peach, you taste something on the inside. Even when you are eyes open and you're looking out at the world, yeah, your eyes might be open, but where are you focusing? That's going to play a role in all of this too. The closer you look at something, I mean, the more close the object or space is that you're focusing on, the more that's going to pull you inward. So if you're focusing on your hand in front of you, that's pretty close. You're probably going to be more dialed into the inner world. But if you move that hand further away, it's going to kind of gradually bring you in the other direction. Maybe enough for the hand. You look at the, you look at the doorknob over there a few feet away. Okay, now you're getting a little further out. You look out the window. Okay. Now you're getting further out. This could be the same object. <laughs> I don't know. We don't have such hands, but maybe... Okay, but let's think about like a bird. There's a bird on your hand. There's a butterfly in your hand. Imagine there's that butterfly right there. Right in front of you. It's on your nose, basically. And that's going to bring you more inward. But as a butterfly flies further and further and further and further away, you're still looking at that one little butterfly or bird or whatever, but... The further off it goes into the, into the distance, the more the exterception kind of dials up. The world out there brightens up and you become a little bit less focused on, less aware of what's happening on the inside. So if that's what you need. If you're too anxious, too trapped in your head or whatever, even if you notice you've been staying home for weeks on end, antisocial, whatever, whatever your inward world problem is, then yeah, you can imagine this butterfly flying off into the distance and, and watching it fly away, or you can watch an actual one. Or you can just choose different objects, starting with your hand, then that cup on your desk, then that plant on your windowsill, and then you walk up over to the window, and you look outside, and then you go downstairs, and you walk through the world. You get out of the city, away from all the buildings and obstacles. And you walk through a big open field. Look at the sky. Okay, that'll work. That'll do the trick. So yeah, it's a kind of chicken and egg thing. Well, I don't want to go outside. I don't want to get up. But if you do get up, you are going to start balancing things out. If you've been busy running around and running around and you're always out there, 
perceptually, but probably also physically, then yeah, maybe start looking at things closer up, bringing that butterfly onto your nose, closing your eyes, feeling your breath, focusing on your heartbeat, going in. And then when that gets too cold or too hot or whatever, turn on the other water, bring things the other direction. This is an ongoing day-to-day, hour-by-hour thing. And I can get into a bunch of other freaking tools, but I see a clearing in this forest right now. I chopped through it enough where I'm kind of content with today. And I hope this was valuable for you. The main takeaway is just recognize that there are these two worlds and that you want to be in both. You are happy in both. Both of them are your home, but on their own, neither one is. You got to exist. Well, I guess right at the sweet spot that you want to be in at this moment. So, Listen to yourself. Look out there. Look inward and say, hmm, how do I feel? If you feel good, if you feel okay, you feel at home, this is a home, this is where I want to be, this is life, this is happiness, this is flow, then good, you're there. But things change. The world inside of you is changing and the world out there is changing. So these two plates are kind of moving in different directions and you can't control it. So uh, stay aware uh, of how you feel and just know that you you might need to change something. You might need to deliberately move this way or that. Push yourself outward or pull yourself more inward to find that homeostasis. And there are a billion other tools. I focused on uh, mainly visual ones today, but there are, there are a lot more. I will try to get more into this. And it's a general idea that I wanted to get out today for you to start chewing on and to therefore remind yourself that it's okay to not to not feel balanced, to not feel happy, to not feel in flow, to feel like, ah, this is not it. I'm missing something in life. It's a human condition. There's a push and pull, inward and outward, interception, exterception. And sometimes one layer dims down too much, or one is just too bright, overwhelming the other, and we forget about the other side. So this is just a reminder of what's going on. That there are these two worlds, there are these two sides, and when you find yourself trapped too far on one end, do the opposite. Flip it inside out. Turn around. Go the other way. Living in a world so loud, trying to drown out our thoughts. But sometimes we gotta pause, find a stillness we've lost. Interception, that inner connection, it's a treasure within. But we can't neglect each the reception. The world we live inside our minds, we find the power to grow. We see the truth that the world wants to show. It's a delicate balance, we gotta find our flow. Navigate. This life inside and outside we go inside out We gotta feel and see Interreception and exterreception Both sides of the key Inside out Find the balance, set ourselves free Embrace the journey, every part of you and me